The story of King Jehoshaphat of Judah is a great lesson for every Christian. He feared and loved God, but he foolishly allied with the most wicked king, and Judah adopted Israel's evil practices, which led to judgment on both nations. King Jehoshaphat, the son of Asa, was the fourth king of Judah during the time of the divided kingdom. We first meet him in 1 Kings 15 verse 24, where we are told that he succeeded Asa. And in 1 Kings 22, we learn that he was 35 years old when he became king and ruled for 25 years. 1 Kings 22 verse 42, Jehoshaphat was 35 years old when he became king and he reigned 25 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Azubah, the daughter of Shilhi. We get a brief account of his time in power in 1 Kings 22, while 2 Chronicles 17 to 22 provides a more detailed description. Jehoshaphat began his reign on a high spiritual note. 2 Chronicles 17 verses 3 to 6. The Lord was with Jehoshaphat, because he followed the ways of his father David before him. He did not consult the Baals, but sought the God of his father, and followed his commands rather than the practices of Israel. The Lord established the kingdom under his control, and all Judah brought gifts to Jehoshaphat, so that he had great wealth and honor. His heart was devoted to the ways of the Lord. Furthermore, he removed the high places and the Asherah poles from Judah. Furthermore, Jehoshaphat dispatched men throughout the kingdom to teach the people God's law. 2 Chronicles 17 verses 7 to 9. Then in the third year of his reign, he sent his officials Ben-Hael, Obadiah, Zechariah, Nathaniel, and Micaiah to teach in the cities of Judah, and with them were the Levites, Shemaiah, Nathaniah, Zabadiah, Ishel, Shemiramoth, Jehonathan, Adonijah, Tobijah, and Tobadonijah, and with them the priests Elishama and Jehoram. They taught in Judah, having the book of the law of the Lord with them. They went throughout all the cities of Judah and taught among the people. Jehoshaphat improved his military defenses mainly against the northern kingdom of Israel. 2 Chronicles 17 verses 1 to 3. Jehoshaphat, his son, then became king of Judah in Asa's place and strengthened his position over Israel. He placed troops in all the fortified cities of Judah and set garrisons in the land of Judah and in the cities of Ephraim, which his father Asa had captured. The Lord was with Jehoshaphat because he followed the example of his father, ancestor David. He did not seek to follow the Baals, the false gods. The surrounding countries feared Judah and paid tribute. After a peaceful agreement with Israel, Jehoshaphat appears to have attempted to contact Israel's king Ahab. Ahab was one of Israel's most wicked kings, and Jehoshaphat could not have been unaware of this. Following the story in 1 Kings 22 and 2 Chronicles 18, Ahab requests Jehoshaphat's assistance in attacking Syria. Jehoshaphat wisely requests that they seek advice from the Lord on the matter. Ahab assembles 400 prophets to support the attack, but Jehoshaphat asked, Is there no longer a prophet of the Lord here, whom we can inquire of? Jehoshaphat realized that these were not genuine prophets of the Lord, and the following interaction occurs between Jehoshaphat and Ahab. But Jehoshaphat asked, is there no longer a prophet of the Lord here whom we can inquire of? There is still one prophet through whom we can inquire of the Lord, but I hate him because he never prophesies anything good about me, but always bad. The king of Israel replied to Jehoshaphat, His name is Micaiah, son of Imlah. As a result, Micaiah was called up, and the question was asked, Attack and be victorious, Micaiah responds, for the Lord will give it into the king's hands. How many times must I make you swear to tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? asked King Ahab. I saw all Israel scattered on the hills like sheep without a shepherd. Micaiah says to Ahab, And the Lord said, These people have no master. 1 Kings 22 verses 15 to 18. So when he came to the king, the king said to him, Micaiah, 
Shall we go against Ramoth Gilead in battle, or shall we not? And he answered him, Go up and be successful, for the Lord will hand it over to the king. But the king doubted him, and said to him, How many times must I make you swear to tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? And he said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the mountains like sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let each of them return to his house in peace. Then the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell you that he would not prophesy good concerning me, but evil? Despite recognizing that Micaiah has spoken for the Lord, Jehoshaphat joins Ahab in the attack. Ahab was killed, but Jehoshaphat just escaped. When Jehoshaphat returns home, a prophet of the Lord chastises him for his partnership with Ahab. Chronicles 19 verses 2 to 3. Jehu the seer, the son of Hanani, went out to meet him and said to the king, Should you help the wicked and love those who hate the Lord? Because of this, the wrath of the Lord is on you. There is, however, some good in you, for you have rid the land of the Ashera poles and have set your heart on seeking God. Jehoshaphat continued to make changes, appointing judges to handle disputes across the land and charging them with making godly judgments and fearing the Lord. 2 Chronicles 19 verses 4 to 11. Jehoshaphat lived in Jerusalem, and he went out again among the people from Beersheba to the hill country of Ephraim, and turned them back to the Lord, the God of their ancestors. He appointed judges in the land in each of the fortified cities of Judah. He told them, Consider carefully what you do, because you are not judging for mere mortals, but for the Lord, who is with you whenever you give a verdict. Now let the fear of the Lord be on you. Judge carefully, for with the Lord our God, there is no injustice or partiality or bribery. In Jerusalem also, Jehoshaphat appointed some of the Levites, priests, and heads of Israelite families to administer the law of the Lord and to settle disputes. And they lived in Jerusalem. He gave them these orders. You must serve faithfully and wholeheartedly in the fear of the Lord. In every case that comes before you from your people who live in the cities, whether bloodshed or other concerns of the law, commands, decrees, or regulations, you are to warn them not to sin against the Lord. Otherwise, His wrath will come on you and your people. Do this, and you will not sin. Amariah the chief priest will be over you in any matter concerning the Lord, and Zebediah son of Ishmael, the leader of the tribe of Judah, will be over you in any matter concerning the king, and the Levites will serve as officials before you. Act with courage, and may the Lord be with those who do well. In 2 Chronicles 20, a coalition of nations decided to attack Judah. Jehoshaphat seeks the Lord and declares a fast for the entire kingdom of Judah. Through a man named Jehaziel, the Lord tells Jehoshaphat that he will deliver Judah without a fight. Jehoshaphat enters battle, accompanied by singers who sing praises to the Lord. The alliance of nations turns against each other and begins to attack one another. Judah's men spent three days gathering the spoils of war that their enemies had also abandoned. God had one more significant test of faith in store for Jehoshaphat. The Moabites and Ammonites were preparing to attack, and word had reached them. Jehoshaphat was terrified, but called for a national fast and a service to seek the Lord. When the entire congregation had gathered, Jehoshaphat offered a powerful prayer. He admitted that their God ruled over all nations and that no one could stand up to him. He claimed that Abraham's descendants were his people, that they lived in the land he gave them, and that he built a sanctuary in his honor. When they called to the Lord, they trusted in his promise to deliver them. Finally, he considered the current threat posed by an unjust nation and pleaded with God to intervene. Jehoshaphat knew what to do because he was familiar with King Solomon's prayer given over a century earlier at the temple dedication. He even mentioned Solomon's prayer in his own intercession because his situation was exactly the type of disaster Solomon had prayed for. Solomon spoke of the Lord emerging from his temple and fighting battles for his people. 
Jehoshaphat asked the Lord the same question and used the exact words. God's people were attacked and the promised land was threatened, but Jehoshaphat knew that God's hand had pledged to victory long ago, and Jehoshaphat was well aware that God keeps his promises. This is a powerful example for Christians of how to respond to crises and triumph in the strength of God. Though Christians, like the rest of the world, can be overwhelmed by a crisis, we have the option of turning to the Lord for intervention and deliverance when we don't know what to do. 2 Chronicles 20 verses 5 to 9 Then Jehoshaphat stood up in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem at the temple of the Lord in front of the new courtyard and said, Lord, the God of our ancestors, are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand, and no one can withstand you. Our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people, Israel, and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? They have lived in it, and have built in it a sanctuary for your name, saying, If calamity comes upon us, whether the sword of judgment, or plague, or famine, we will stand in your presence before this temple that bears your name and will cry out to you in our distress, and you will hear us and save us. God responded to the king's prayer through a man named Jahaziel, through whom the Lord's Spirit encouraged both the king and the people. Take note of Jahaziel's declaration. The battle is not yours to fight, but God's. To put it another way, the Lord was saying to his people, I've got this. Even though the king's forces would have to confront the enemy, they would not have to fire a single arrow. When Jehoshaphat and the people heard the news, they fell in worship while the Levites stood up to sing praises to God. Take note that Jehoshaphat and his people won this battle on their faces before him. 2 Chronicles 20 verses 20 to 30 Early in the morning, they left for the desert of Tekoa. As they set out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Listen to me, Judah and the people of Jerusalem, have faith in the Lord your God, and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets, and you will be successful. After consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness as they went out at the head of the army, saying, Give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. As they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir who were invading Judah, and they were defeated. The Ammonites and the Moabites rose up against the men from Mount Seir to destroy and annihilate them. After they finished slaughtering the men from Seir, they helped to destroy one another. When the men of Judah came to the place that overlooks the desert and looked towards the vast army, they saw only dead bodies lying on the ground. No one had escaped. So Jehoshaphat and his men went to carry off their plunder, and they found among them a great amount of equipment and clothing and also articles of value, more than they could take away. There was so much plunder that it took three days to collect it. On the fourth day, they assembled in the Valley of Barakah, where they praised the Lord. This is why it is called the Valley of Barakah to this day. Then, led by Jehoshaphat, all the men of Judah and Jerusalem returned joyfully to Jerusalem, for the Lord had given them cause to rejoice over their enemies. They entered Jerusalem and went to the temple of the Lord with harps and lyres and trumpets. The fear of God came on all the surrounding kingdoms when they heard how the Lord had fought against the enemies of Israel. And the kingdom of Jehoshaphat was at peace, for his God had given him rest on every side. Even though Jehoshaphat began his time in power by expelling the idolatrous high places, there were still high places that had not been removed by the end of his time. Jehoshaphat began well, but his diligence wavered, and idolatry returned. Jehoshaphat attempted a joint shipbuilding venture with Israel's wicked king Ahaziah according to 1 Kings 22 verses 41 to 50 and 2 Chronicles 20 verses 35 to 37. 1 Kings 22 verses 48 to 49. 
Now Jehoshaphat built a fleet of trading ships to go to Ophir for gold, but they never set sail. They were wrecked at Ezion Gibeah. At that time, Ahaziah, son of Ahab, said to Jehoshaphat, Let my men sail with yours. But Jehoshaphat refused. 2 Chronicles 20 verses 35 to 37. After all this, Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, made an alliance with Ahaziah, king of Israel, and he acted wickedly in doing so. He joined him in building ships to go to Tarshish for trade, and they built them in Ezion Geber. Then Eliza, the son of Dodavahu of Marashah, prophesied against Jehoshaphat, saying, Because you have allied yourself with Ahaziah, the Lord has broken down what you have built. So the ships were wrecked and were unable to go to Tarshish. Jehoshaphat, who had already been rebuked for his partnership with Ahab, is approached with a prophet's warning. And although it appeared that Jehoshaphat heeded the warning and did not allow Ahaziah's men to sail with the people of Judah, the fleet was wrecked and Jehoshaphat's foolish investment with Ahaziah proved ineffective. Jehoshaphat is still regarded as a good and godly king, but his rule ended in disaster. He persisted in attempting to ally with Israel, even though the kings of Israel were evil. Jehoshaphat worshipped the Lord and led his people to seek the Lord, but the people's hearts were never wholly changed. They went back to pagan customs. King Jehoshaphat's faith was not passed down to his son Jehoram, who ruled after him. Jehoram began by slaying all of his brothers before forming a partnership with Israel by marrying Ahab's daughter. 2 Chronicles 21 verses 4 to 6 When Jehoram had ascended over the kingdom of his father and made himself secure, he killed all his brothers with the sword to eliminate any rivals, and some of the leaders of Israel as well. Jehoram was 32 years of age when he became king, and he reigned eight years in Jerusalem. He walked in the way of the kings of Israel, just as the house of Ahab had done, for he married the daughter of Ahab, and he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. We can learn a lot from this Old Testament king about whom we don't hear enough. First and foremost, the king demonstrates that we are all capable of making mistakes in judgment. The Bible instructs us to use discernment, especially with those in whom we put our trust. Jehoshaphat formed a bad alliance with King Ahab, one of Israel's most wicked kings. Although Jehoshaphat was not killed as a result of his friendship, he made a huge mistake by trusting the wrong person. Second, Jehoshaphat teaches us the significance of breaking the family cycle of errors. Although his father Asa did not worship the idols that were placed throughout Judah, he did not do much to demolish them. Jehoshaphat begins the process by removing the Asherah poles. Finally, Jehoshaphat demonstrates that God can begin new parts of his plan for our lives at any time. Jehoshaphat's life was half over by the time he took the throne, but God continued to work in his life. In the last 25 years of his life, he accomplishes much, ushering Israel into a period of prosperity and military fortitude. Jehoshaphat may have needed a lesson in making wise political alliances. After all, the dangerous one he created nearly killed him. But we also know that the kingdom of Judah produces only a few good kings, one of whom was Jehoshaphat. We may not name our children after him, but we can learn from his example and faith in God during his reign. Partnerships with non-Christians can compromise if the believer is constantly vigilant against the risk. Many people believe that there are two kinds of people, saved and unsaved. Paul corrects us by introducing a third category, the saved but unspiritual. The spiritual person is spirit-directed, spirit-dependent, and spirit-dominated. He aspires to walk in the spirit. Galatians 5 verse 16 New International Version So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Unspiritual people, on the other hand, act like people of the world. They blend in with non-believers in terms of language, lifestyle, priorities and personality. They allowed God to save them, but not to change them. 
Such carnal Christianity frustrated Paul. Are you so foolish? After beginning by means of the Spirit, are you now trying to finish by means of the flesh? Galatians 3 verse 3 You don't want to carpool with unspiritual Christians. They have no kind words to share. There is jealousy and quarreling among them. Evaluate your alliances in career, leisure, and finances. Which allies tempt you to compromise? Which allies help you to know the Bible? Pray. Add a spiritual ally this week.